Tired of paying for an OS that treats you like the product? What if there was one that was free, efficient, and actually respected your privacy? Well, you're not alone in asking. Let's dive in and talk about that. Today on Mackie Tech, we're diving into five ways that Linux absolutely smokes Windows, discussing their pricing, ads, system efficiency, software freedom, and open source. I ran a community poll to see which distribution of Linux you wanted to see compared to Windows, and Linux Mint came out on top with Fedora as a close second. So for this video, I'm putting Linux Mint 22.1 with the Cinnamon desktop head-to-head -head with Windows 11 Home. For a computer, we're using a 10-year-old Dell Optiplex 7010, running a Core i5, 16 gigabytes of RAM, and dual 240 gigabyte SSDs, one for each OS to keep things fair and to show how Linux can breathe life into older hardware. So let's jump into number one, which is OS pricing, or lack thereof in Linux Mint's case, as it's completely free to download and open source. And the open source is something we'll discuss a little later in the video. In contrast, the MSRP for Windows 11 Home is around $139, and the Pro is listed for $199. Each is priced for one computer or one license. And yes, you can buy a Windows 11 Pro key for like 20 bucks online, but it's kind of a gamble. A lot of those keys are from corporate licenses or OEM bundles. And Microsoft didn't exactly give the green light to resell them. So good luck getting support if that happens to start getting error codes for months in. Meanwhile, Linux doesn't have a pro or home version. You can install it on as many computers as you want. And that is going to bring us to number two in how Linux smokes Windows, which is ads, or once again, lack thereof in Linux's case. In my opinion, one of the most annoying aspects of Windows is its constant solicitations. And even after disabling personalized ads in Windows, you still get ads. They're just not targeted. It's like saying, hey, we're still going to disrupt you with ads, and they're going to be even more annoying. An example of this is Microsoft's Edge browser, which is the real culprit, routinely trying to discourage me from downloading Google Chrome, prompting me like two or three times that I didn't need a different browser. Linux, on the other hand, doesn't serve ads, nor does it have its own browser because it doesn't collect your data in the first place. It actually ships with Firefox, but you can search for Chrome, and you do not get blasted with solicitations. And speaking of ads clogging up resources, Let's move on to number three, which is RAM and OS efficiency. Windows has always been a memory pig and never been great with resource management. As an example, when Windows is sitting idle, it's using almost 20% of the available RAM if we look at the task manager, which is about three gigabytes. And you'll see these uh, all these background processes is running. There's like eight, nine instances of Microsoft Edge running. If we bring up the terminal in Linux Mint and type in F-R-E-E -E space dash H, which is how to show your available RAM in a nice readable fashion, Linux is using a third of the RAM Windows uses, just over 1.1 gigabytes of RAM at idle, showing that Windows has taken up more of your valuable resources running processes that you didn't even want. And this is gonna bring us to number four, which is software freedom. So I installed Windows on this Dell offline and without linking a Microsoft account, just to show that Microsoft still installs its usual equal system of bloatware anyway. And as an example, if I go into Task Manager and go to Startup Apps, we have Microsoft Teams, we have Edge, we have Microsoft OneDrive, and if I click on Start, I have apps for M365, Outlook, the Xbox Council, which is super handy if I'm buying this for a business, all of which are first party products installed without my consent and just taken up storage. Now to be fair and in contrast, Linux does have pre-installed apps like LibreOffice, GIMP, Thunderbird, but they're not first party and are free community software that doesn't try to track me. And this brings us to our last comparison, which is data tracking and open source. As I mentioned earlier, Linux Mint is open source, as are most Linux distros, which means that the kernel can be modified and redistributed freely. As an example, the Linux Mint source code is freely available on its GitHub page, which I'll leave in the video description. Windows, by contrast, has always been a closed source. 
Even if I wanted to learn from it, improve upon it, or verify that it's safe, you simply can't. Microsoft owns the code, you just have to, you know, trust them. And this brings us to data tracking, which, let's be honest, Windows is basically the Facebook of operating systems. If we go under the ironically named privacy and security, and then click on general, we can see that 95% of the apps and data tracking is enabled by default. And as I mentioned earlier, even if I turned off tailored experiences for ads, Windows still shows required diagnostic data and is partially mandatory and essential and I really can't disable it without group policies or tweaking the registry. For Linux Mint, there's also a privacy setting, but it's how long to keep files and to check your internet. Now, I didn't cover Microsoft's AI Copilot or its opt-in surveillance minion recall because these two beauties deserve a dedicated video of their own, which will make a good follow-up to this one. What are some other examples of how Linux smokes Windows you can think of? I know there's a lot of them, but uh, let us know in the comments. Please sound off and give us your feedback. Anyway, that's gonna wrap it up for another video. If you found this information useful and you wanna see more like this, please make sure that you give us a thumbs up and that you are subscribed to Mackie Tech. And before you go, I do have a couple other videos up here featuring some other Linux distros that I did that I think you'll like. Thank you again for watching, and we'll be talking to you again very soon.